Hello Builders, I'm Martin and this is Make Your Own Sound, the channel in which we're talking about how to create your own sound mixing console, episode 5. In the previous episode, which you can watch over here, we set up our console software for the first time and tried to run some audio through it. Some of you may have gotten good results and some of you may not. No matter the results, what we are going to do today is a real milestone and an obligatory step if you are at all serious about building your mixing console and using it professionally. Today we are going to optimize the operating system for this job. Let's talk a bit why this is important. When you buy a router, a robot vacuum cleaner or a digital console for that matter, all of them have some kind of operating system. And all these operating systems are simpler than what you may be used to and often have just one job. This to behave like a router, this to behave like a robot vacuum cleaner and this to behave like a well, a digital audio console. No more and no less. The word we are looking for is focus. You can't play games on your router and you can't check your email on your console. In our case, for better or for worse, unless you are a programmer that's capable of coding an entirely new operating system, we'll be working with our old friend Windows which can be called a general purpose operating system because it can do many and all kinds of different things. You can say it's a distracted operating system because it tries to run several dozens of different processes, services and programs all at the same time. And as you know, if you want something to be done well, you must focus on it and not be distracted by 10 other things. Or it will be like... Oh, you had that very important solo on your very special guitar that I had to turn on, but I didn't because I was checking my Facebook. Sorry. Or in practice, it could be the difference from your console sounding like this. Rather than sounding like this. So, what we are going to do today is try to turn this distracted operating system into a more focused one and make it think more about the sound and less about anything else. Now, there are some more important things you need to know and consider before you do the optimization. What we are going to do will make Windows much more profiled and less general purpose. In this process, we are going to disable as much of the things in Windows that are useless to us as we can. That will make the operating system behave better for live sound, but also could make it behave worse for any other kind of work. In fact, it's best if you consider this installation of Windows usable for only one single job and for nothing else. No internet, no games, no office documents, nothing. That's why I will strongly suggest you don't do that to your only Windows installation on your main or only computer. Instead, here's what I will suggest. Variant 1. If you have a separate PC that you wish to dedicate only for the job of being a mixing console, do these things to its operating system. Or variant 2, if you have only one desktop or laptop machine and you wish to use it both as a normal computer and as a mixing console, then I will strongly suggest you do two separate installations of Windows on it. Then every time you start the machine, you will be able to choose which one you want to boot to. Do your normal stuff in the first Windows and do your live mixing in the second. Now, two more strong suggestions. Suggestion number one, always start clean. If you have a dedicated PC but it has an old Windows that you've used for some time, wipe the whole disk and start with a fresh installation. If you have a PC that you want to use for everything, leave the Windows that you already have for all the normal stuff, make a new partition on the disk and do a fresh second installation of Windows just for mixing. And suggestion number two, I don't care what version of Windows you use for your normal stuff, but for best results in what we are going to do, use Windows 7. Seriously, before I came to tell you this, I did extensive tests for over a month on different hardware with both Windows 7 and Windows 10. You can make Windows 10 work, but Windows 7 always does a better job. 
it's just more relaxed and tries to do less stuff all at once. Windows 10 is just too busy, which makes it worse for real-time jobs. Several years ago, I would suggest Windows XP, but it's no longer supported and newer hardware doesn't have drivers for it. So today it's no longer a good option. Also, installing two different versions of Windows on one machine is ok and quite easy. So you can have a 10 and a 7 in one place. No matter what you choose, I'll show you how to optimize both Windows 7 and Windows 10. What I'm not going to show you is how to partition your disk and how to install Windows on your computer. For that, there are hundreds of tutorials over the internet and one more is not necessary. So, make sure you have a fresh installation of Windows. Then you do all the necessary updates and make sure all of your drivers are properly installed. You will want to begin with a new healthy installation. When all this is done, let's begin with the optimization of Windows 7. And if you chose to install Windows 10 for your console, you can directly go and watch my next video, which shows how to optimize Windows 10. Here we are! If you've just made a fresh installation of Windows 7, your desktop should look very much like mine. I will presume that you already installed all the drivers for your hardware and made all the necessary updates to the operating system. Now's the time to install all your other things like audio plugins that require internet for installation or additional software that has some connection with this kind of work. I, for example, always install Reaper because I like to use it for multitrack recording and playback. Ready? OK. From now on, I'll do things relatively quickly, so if you miss something, just press pause or rewind. Let's begin. First, click on the Start button and go to Control Panel. If your Control Panel doesn't look like this, click here and choose Large Icons. Then, go to Action Center. Now, let's turn all these annoying notifications off by clicking on these spots. Then, click on Change Action Center Settings and untick all these boxes. You don't need annoying notifications to pop up while you're working. Click OK. Then click on Change User Account Control Settings and bring this slider to Never Notify. Click OK, click Yes and close the window. Then I like to move the Recycle Bin over there and bring my computer icon on the desktop by clicking on the Start button, then right-click on Computer and select Show on Desktop. Now right-click on my computer and select Properties. Select Advanced System Settings. Click here, select Adjust for Best Performance and you can bring back these ticks if you want. Then go to Advanced and click here. If your computer has 8 GB of RAM or more, you can safely turn off the virtual memory. Click here, then here, set, yes and OK. If you have less than 8 GB of RAM, maybe it's best to leave this on. In that case, click here and in these two boxes write an equal number. Try with 4096 or 8192 then set and ok and another ok. I won't address this section for now. There are different opinions about which of the two options is better for real-time audio, but I personally haven't found any noticeable difference on neither of my machines. So I'll leave it alone for now. You can try it both ways if you want to. Click ok. And things are already becoming uglier. And yes, that's normal. Now go to System Protection, make sure you've selected your C drive, click on Configure, then turn off System Protection, Apply, Yes and OK. Then go to Remote and untick this box. Finally, and this will come in handy later, make sure you gave your computer a proper name that's short and clear. You may have already done this during the installation, but if you haven't, now is the time to do it. Go to Computer Name, click on Change and write the name here. I will call mine Audio Console. Then click OK and OK, Apply and Restart later. And while we're here, let's make sure this Windows will never update automatically. Go to Windows Update, then Change Settings and right here choose Never Check for Updates. Click OK. 
Next, go to Control Panel. Click on Windows Firewall, then turn Windows Firewall on or off and click here and here. Then click OK. Go back to Control Panel and click on Power Options. You will most probably find yourself set to Balanced Power Plan. This is not what you need. Click on this arrow and High Performance Power Plan will be revealed. Choose this plan and go to Change Plan Settings. Set these things to Never and go to Change Advanced Power Settings. If you have a laptop, you will have two variants for each setting called Plugged In and on battery. In that case, simply make the same setting twice for the plugged in and for the on battery. Let's go! Make the hard disks never turn off. Pause the slideshow. Make sure that sleep is turned off and wake timers are disabled. Make sure that USB selective suspend setting is disabled. Make sure the power button does nothing. If you are on a laptop, here you will have two more settings called Lid Close Action and maybe Sleep Button Action. Make them all do nothing. Finally, tell your display to never turn off. Now click OK and save changes. Then close this window. Click with your right mouse button somewhere on the desktop and choose Personalize. From all the themes here, select Windows Classic Theme. Then go to Sounds and over here choose No Sounds. Then untick this box, click OK and close this window. Click on the Start button and in the search bar write Services. Then click on this icon. Make this window bigger so that you can see better. These are all the working services in Windows right now. We are gonna stop some of them. Here's how. Find the service DNS Client and double-click on it. Go to Startup Type and here choose Disabled. Then click OK. In the same manner, disable the following services. Print Spooler, Security Center, Shell Hardware Detection, Superfetch, Themes, Windows Defender, Windows Error Reporting Service, Windows Firewall, Windows Search and Windows Update. When you're finished, close the window. Now we'll do some final touches. Click on the Start button, in the search bar type msconfig and hit Enter. Go to Startup and here you will find all the programs that start automatically every time you boot into Windows. Every computer will be different, so I cannot tell you which ones to stop. So try to imagine which ones you absolutely need and untick all the others. Don't worry, if something important doesn't work next time you boot into Windows, you can easily re-enable it. Just come back here and tick it. Then click OK and exit without restart. Now is a good time to turn off the internet on this machine and never turn it back on again unless you absolutely need to. This is now a mixing console and not a computer. So, no internet. If you use a cable connection, just unplug it. If you use Wi-Fi, turn the adapter off. Now click on my computer with your right mouse button and select Properties. Then go to Device Manager. This is a list of all your hardware. If you know what you are doing, try to disable hardware devices that you will not use. For example, if your computer has one or more built-in sound cards, you may disable them and leave only the professional one that you will use for live mixing. In my case, this is my professional sound card and this is the built-in one which I will disable. I'll click with my right mouse button and select Disable. Then Yes. In a similar way, I will disable my CD-ROM drive, my floppy disk drive and my Wi-Fi card. Don't worry, if you need something, you can always enable it in the same way. Just right-click and select Enable. Then, just because I like it that way and you don't have to do it, I'll click on the taskbar and select Properties. I'll choose Combine when taskbar is full here. Then I'll go to Start menu and go to Customize. I'll make this number 0 and this number also 0. Click OK and again OK. 
Next, double click on my computer, then right click on your C drive. Select properties, then tools, and then defragment now. Go to configure schedule and untick this box. Then click OK and close all these windows. And finally, I did this in the previous video, but I will do it again because it matches the theme. If you have already installed your demo or your full version of SAC, go find it. Double click on my computer, go into your C drive, then SAC demo and here's the executable. Click on it with your right mouse button and choose properties. Go to advanced and untick these two boxes, then click OK. Go to Compatibility tab, tick this box and select Windows XP Service Pack 3. Tick the Run as Administrator box and click OK. And that's it! You can now restart your computer and all the things we set up will become active. Or in our case, most probably inactive. Try it and see if the performance of your system improves. In the next video, we'll do the exact same optimization, but for Windows 10. It will be a harder job than this one. So, see you there and thank you for watching. Oh, you're still here? Great! There are a few more important things I need to mention, like the video you just watched is part of a series and all the episodes are connected. So, if you stumbled on this episode by accident and you wasn't sure what exactly I was talking about, you can go and watch the previous episodes or at least the first episode over there, which explains the idea of the whole endeavor. And I'll be very happy if you liked the video. It's part of one big tutorial about how to build your own sound mixing console. So if you did, please consider clicking on the like button. And if you find this topic interesting or useful, you may subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified when I'm ready with the next video. And I know there are people out there who do what I do and know more than me. So, if you know something that I don't or have ideas for new episodes, please tell me. I'll be happy to also learn from you.